What is up guys, Ographix in here. In today's video, we're gonna learn in Photoshop how to quickly add water reflections to your architecture piece. This video is going to be essential to everyone seeking to improve their post-production skills, so stick to the end of the video to learn not only how to achieve this effect on your image, but to learn loads of other tricks along the tutorial. This video is going to be focused on this specific topic and it is going to be part of a series of videos that will talk about quick tips in Photoshop and will teach you some great techniques. It is, it is so important to know how to do this directly into Photoshop for a number of reasons, but mostly because it takes much less time than render engines like V-Ray, especially for us architects that aren't supposed to be CGI experts, since we also have a lot of other stuff to do, right? So just for you guys to know, there's a full course in Photoshop post-production coming with a very detailed step-by-step -step on how to compose amazing images from start to finish. It is almost done and as soon as it launches, I'll let you guys know with a new video here on the channel as well as on Instagram at o.graphx. So let's start. First things first, these can be applied on any angle, I mean it doesn't have to be perfect aligned, but for the tutorial I'll use a perfect front view of this elementary school project. All the project info will be in the video description. The project isn't mine, but I did the visualization part. Anyways, once you have your file ready to go, make a selection of what your lake, ocean, water body will look like. Actually, let me just fast forward a couple of minutes here to build up an environment to this lake. I'm using this image that isn't supposed to, to, to have a lake. But again, it's just for the tutorial and to teach you guys some great techniques. I have separated the main layers of the original file into these more manageable layers, like the trees, the people and most importantly the grass, so that I can fast composite it here in the tutorial. What I'm actually doing is just creating this fake lake that obviously doesn't exist on the real project and to do so I need to pretend that the grass is growing over some parts of it and also create some uneven surfaces around the edges. This isn't really part of the process, what we will learn today is just water reflection part, the amazing ripples that creates a realistic water. So let me just finish this and we can move on to the next step. But if you would like to watch this process in a slow pace, you can use YouTube's built-in feature to slow it down up to 25% of the real speed. All of these shortcuts and tricks that I'm using here were thought already on our previous tutorials especially on the 7 tips that every architect must know. So go check that out if you'd like some more info. Over all of these tutorials that I have already made, I go through the shortcut that I use very often, uh, the Ctrl Alt G, which is for clipping below. I also teach how to fast use the brushes, for example, changing sizes and hardness and opacity and everything else related to that. You got the idea of what I'm doing right here, right? So let's jump into the tutorial itself. Alright, now let's duplicate our base image with Ctrl J. This image the duplicate can be with your final render, as I'm using right now, or with your base render exported from the render engine. Make sure your reflection layer is a smart object, so that you can come back later and change the effects if you want to. To do that, right click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now with the water selection, create a mask over this new layer using this button down here. You can control click on the layer thumbnail to make a selection of everything that is inside that layer. And unlink the mask so we can move them freely from one another. Then control T to transform and right click on the image and choose Flip Vertical. Now you got to position the architecture piece in such a place that looks correct. I mean the distance of the water from this wall should correlate to how you position the reflection. You can definitely do this by eye and it should just look fine. Now here comes the effects that we are going to apply. Go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Choose the angle of 90 degrees and the distance of 10 pixels or so. First easy part is done, now we need to create the ripples. This next step you're only going to do it probably once, then you can use the image created to your next post productions. 
we're going to create this image. If you'd like to have this file without having to go with all the trouble of creating this image, I'm going to leave a link to my Gumroad website for you to get a free copy. Nevertheless, it is important to know the process and follow up because you might want to create different sizes and proportions of this image. So, open a new file with these dimensions, 600 by 1000 pixels. The size doesn't matter, but make sure it's vertical like this. Next, fill the layer with black. If it says background here, just double click it and press enter to unlock it. Then we need to add noise, so go to filter, noise, add noise. Increase the amount to maximum, uniform and monochromatic. Hit OK. Next, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and set the radius to a small value. Somewhere around 1 pixel should do the job. Now in the channels tab, select only the red channel. You can leave the others turned on for now. Then go to filter, stylize and boss. And set the angle to 180. Height to 1 pixel and amount to maximum. I know this is this sounds like a very complicated step by step. But just, just follow the tutorial and you'll get the same result. We now have to do this to the green channel. But changing the angle, set it to 90 degrees. Once you have finished this part, we just need to stretch the bottom of the image to fit in, this, in the perspective. You probably have already figured it out, but these bumps that we have just created will generate the water ripples. So hit Ctrl T, right click to choose perspective and zoom out a lot. We need to stretch this very far. The more you stretch the bottom, the bigger will be the ripples on the foreground of the image. That's why it is interesting to test out some perspectives here to see which one fits your image best. In our case, one with a less distortion perspective will work better, but I'm gonna leave a couple of options on the free copy download at Gumroad page. Once ready, save this image as water ripples as PSD file. Name it something you will remember, maybe water reflection displacement. Now back to the original file. On the reflection layer, go to filter, distort, displace and set the values to 10 and 5, stretch to fit and repeat edge pixels. These results will also vary according to your image. As soon as you hit OK, a window will pop up for you to choose the water ripples that we have just created. And the magic will happen next. Amazing, right? Since we have created a smart object, now you just have to double click on this effect and change the values to another one to test out some results. Please keep in mind that these values that works for me and the perspective that also works for this image might not work on, on yours. So please test out the results to see which one fits you best. To finish off, there are a few effects we can add to make it more realistic. For example, we can create a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Clip it to the main layer using the shortcut Ctrl Alt G and set the values like so. Select the mask and paint it fully black. Now with a soft round brush, set the opacity to 30%. We can paint some of the edges where the water meets the land using a white color. This means that the mask will reveal only on these white parts that we are painting the settings that we have just set on the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Next, we can add a new layer and create some haze around the lake or even a brighter area where the sun would have brightened by its reflection, I don't know. But something like this, using a soft white brush, maybe also lower the haze opacity and even the layer reflection opacity some as well. Since we have applied the effect to a whole layer, we can still move the layer to check out which position is better. I think this one is alright. Remember that this effect can be applied over several new objects that you're adding to the lake. I'm going to add very quickly an e another example person around here to simulate that. Watch closely. It's the same process used before, but now into smaller objects. I'm also creating masks to remove some of the opacity, like, like it is fading away the further it gets from the person. Also shadows and as you could see I was testing several values to see which one fits best. So that's basically it. You now know the process of how to create amazing water ripples and reflections on whole image such as the final render or single elements that can be trees, bushes, people, car and everything else in between. 
I really hope you have learned something today. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Leave any questions if you got them on the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Bye.